Big 12 camp previews are here. What are, should Arizona's expectations be, and what are the other teams that matter? You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Mike Luke, and thanks for listening to Locked On Wildcats. This show is brought to you by Game Time. Check it out. All kinds of good stuff at uh, Game Time. And again, you can go to a bad concert or you can go to a great sporting event. Either way, Game Time's got you covered. All right, camp is here. Is everybody ready for some football? I know that I am. Now, in Arizona, we're not used to having high expectations, but we have high expectations this year, and a big reason why is because of the amount of talent that's on Arizona's roster. Now, we've talked a lot about this over the uh, we've talked a lot about this over the past what I don't know a uh, couple months. That to me, Arizona needs nine wins. Period. I will uh, settle for nothing less. Nine wins, that's what Arizona needs, and I think that Arizona should be able to get that with the kind of talent that they have, with the kind of uh, just, you know, you look at that roster, and we'll we'll kind of co- we'll kind of come back to that. I believe that Arizona is a I believe that Arizona is very nationally underrated in the grand scheme of things, and I think that honestly, we are. Uh, you look at Arizona, and you're like, all right, that's a team that I think is ready to rock and roll. They're loaded, and so we will talk about them. But we need to talk a little bit about some of the other teams out there that I think a lot of team, you know, people are talking about what they need to know. All right, now Utah was the pick to win the conference. Is the co- pick to win the conference this year? Utah is obviously very, very good. I don't know that there's a better. I don't know. If pound for pound is the right term coach than Kyle Whittingham. I really don't. He is he's just a next level uh, he's just a next level coach. And when you watch him, you can just tell by the uh, you can just tell by kind of like the integrity that he runs with, the uh, style, the uh, you know, he brings in top 40 recruiting classes um, and he generally turns those players into studs. And you can't really make the case, well, you know, like you could 15 years ago, well, he's doing it in a bad conference, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, 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 no. He did it in the Pac-12, which is a good conference, and I think you could easily make the case that he was probably the most successful coach in the Pac-12. 12 the last what seven eight years as a matter of fact uh yes he was the best coach the last seven or eight years but the big question for uh utah is you return a ton on defense you return a ton on offense you bring in dorian singer i think dorian singer is going to be uh, very good for them but the question still is cam rising if cam rising is healthy then I, they could easily rise to the top get it cam rising is just cam rising is just a really really good football player um listen He's not necessarily a Noah Fafita or a Shadur Sanders where he's going to put up massive stats and you're going to be like, whoa, whoa, what just happened there? Um, but he's going to make the big play. On a third and eight, he's going to make the right read. On a third and eight, he is going to run the ball and he, or, you know, he's going to take what the proverbial defense gives him and, again, just going to make the right play. That's what he does. But And you saw last year that when Utah did not have him, they were that offense was absolutely atrocious. That was one of the worst offenses. That might have been the worst offense I've ever seen from a Kyle Whittingham team. Now, you could say that they're uh, they're covered a little bit better this year and you'd probably be right. I think with the uh, with Sam Hewart coming in X5 star QB, you well, it can't be any worse. How about that? I think that's uh, that's the way that I would put this. I don't think that it can be any worse. And so there is there's certainly that that uh, you could look at. But I think you got to have a healthy Cam Rising. Now, the interesting thing about Cam Rising is that Cam Rising could come back for another year if he wants. So we might not even be talking about the end of the Cam Rising era. This one might just be getting started. But that, to me, is the key for Utah. If Cam Rising's healthy, not only are they a really good team, um, I think that they are a, a national uh, title or a college football playoff contender. That's how much I think of them. Like I said, a lot to like about Utah and obviously, Obviously, a lot to like about Kyle Whittingham. Just a fantastic, fantastic coach. Now, some of the other ones. Then you've got uh, you got Kansas. Lance Leopold. Uh, stop me if you've heard this before. That uh, Lance Leopold is one of the uh, 
Lance Leopold is probably one of the top 10 to 15 coaches in the entire country. He is what he has done at Buffalo, what he has done at and now at Kansas in short order has been nothing short of remarkable. He is a he gets the absolute most out of his talent and his rebuilds are very quick. I mean Kansas football was one of the biggest jokes in the entire industry this past uh, or you know a couple years ago. Lance Leopold guided them to a top 25 finish this past year. Now at the uh, running back spot, you're obviously, you've got a lot of talent there. Um, I don't think anybody uh, questions that, but it's very much like Utah, though, where with the with Utah, I think there's so many questions about, there's so many questions about uh, Cam Rising and exactly where he's, uh, where he's at in the grand scheme of things with his. Jalen Daniels, you just got to be able to, Jalen Daniels just got to be able to stay healthy. If Jalen Daniels stays healthy, then I think that you're in some really good shape because he's, I think, one of the more talented quarterbacks in the entire country. We've seen that before, and he's an underrated passer. He can make plays as well if he needs to with his legs. He's really kind of that X factor that makes Kansas go. When he's good, Kansas is a real problem. But like I said, it's very much like uh, it's very much like Utah with uh, Cam Rising, that it's going to be very dependent on the quarterback staying healthy. If the quarterback quarterback stays healthy, then I think that you're in some pretty good shape. But again, that's going to come back to the quarterback staying healthy. Now, with uh, uh, turning over then to uh, Kansas State, obviously Chris Kleiman's done a great job at Kansas State. Um, he feels like, you know, hopefully he's a lifer because he's just got that kind of feel. He feels like the kind of uh, guy that uh, fits in very well at Kansas State. Would love to see him stay there for as long as he wants. But, listen, with this, uh, obviously, you're bringing in Dylan Edwards from Colorado. He's going to be one of your running backs. You've obviously already got a 1,000-yard back as well. But this one's going to come down to Avery Johnson. I am, you know, as we get closer, I'm buying an Avery Johnson. And I think a big reason why is, first of all, I trust climbing a great deal. Uh, the other thing is with the... Uh, you watch, you watch this team, you watch this squad, and you're like, all right. Um, you run off Will Howard to Ohio State, you probably have a lot of faith in this kid. And when you look at the tape, it's easy to understand why you would have a lot of faith in the kid because, again, he's big, he's strong, he's powerful, and he can. he's very fast. He's very, very fast, and I think that's something that you got to factor in as well. Um, he's a game breaker. He's got all the potential in the world. I think the big question you're going to have is, can he, uh, when it comes to uh, his completion percentage, what can he keep that completion percentage around? Can he keep that completion percentage around what, uh, 57, 58%? Because if he does, I think the other parts of his game are going to uh, are going to speak for themselves. That's uh, that's that's a prediction on uh, uh, Avery Johnson, but. Really highly rated kid. You can certainly understand why Kansas State's going to go with him. Um, again, it keeps coming back to the quarterback. With the quarterback, if the quarterback is taken care of, uh, then these teams are generally good to go. It's kind of like the NFL. If you don't have a good quarterback, then you're going to be in a lot of tough. But you're going to be in a tough situation. So there is. Uh, there's obviously that. Now we're going to talk about a team that might have the most talent, but I have a lot of questions about their quarterback. But first, we need to address some of the elephants in the room here. And that first elephant in the room is Game Time. Check it out. Game Time. All kinds of fun stuff at Game Time like we talked about. You can go to bad concerts. You can go to, uh, you can go to bad concerts. You can go to uh, good games. You can go to all kinds of stuff at Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. All right. Now, with Game Time, the other thing that you got to like about it, too, is that you are going to save every... Uh, a lot of people are using game time and there's a reason that a lot of people are using game time it's because it's fun and it works and again like i said download the game time app today use code locked on college for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms do apply and factor meal kits check it out check it out all right say so yeah, this is the time of the year everybody's trying to get in some shape you know get in shape before the winter comes factor meals is here to help Head to factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 
And use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE50 to get 50% off your first order. Again, 50% off. Really good. This is very tasty food as well. Very scrumptious. So, again, check it out. Head to factormeals.com slash LOCKEDONCOLLEGE50. Use code LOCKEDON50 to get 50% off your first order. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the other teams. Obviously, Oklahoma State's right at the top, and I think that Mike Gundy... Uh, Mike Gundy, I think, is one... Of, it's weird, because everybody knows who Mike Gundy is, but I think he's probably one of the more underrated coaches in all of college uh, football. In that, you look in the last 20 years... Uh, uh, Tom, basically every other year, a top 25 finish, quite a number of top 10 finishes, top 11 finishes in there as well, and again, just been a just been you know, consistent. I think the uh, the question that you have this year is well, first of all, Ollie Gordon, Ollie Gordon might be the best running back in college football. He is uh, he's spectacular. Got into a little bit of trouble, but it doesn't sound like from what uh, Mike Gundy is saying that uh, that will uh, impact him on the uh, field at all. Sounds like uh, he's his punishment might be that he's going to get more carries, not less carries. Um, now, at the quarterback position, you've got uh, Alan Bowman. That, to me, is the uh, the question mark in all of this. Watched Bowman last year and uh, was not impressed. Um, you know, coming back this year, maybe the uh, another year, uh, he's a little bit better. But I never looked at him and said that that's a dynamic quarterback that can. Uh, you know, that can take Oklahoma State over the top. As a matter of fact, I thought the exact opposite. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that because, again, on defense, you got the conference defensive player of the year, in my opinion, on the other side. On the uh, And so and you got a lot of talent, but what's it going to really be like when it comes to – what's it going to be like when it comes to Alan Bowman? Is he going to be able to be the player that kind of takes you over the top? I don't know. Uh, i got a lot of questions on that. So – with all the teams, and this said respectfully because we very much like all of our Big 12 uh, friends, I like Arizona. Like I said, I'm back in the A on this one. I think Arizona's got the best combination of talent, quarterback, and you could say, well, Mike, what about the coach? And I think that's a very fair uh, very fair critique. My only thing is that I would say is that you look at his record at San Jose State. Granted, it's a totally, totally different uh, environment. Totally, I, I get all of that. But I look at it, and I'm not, I'm not super concerned, to be honest with you, because San Jose State, he put together a solid product, and they're really, let's be honest here, there's not a ton, there was not a ton to work with, and it's not like you had good facilities there to be able to lure kids to. I think there's a lot of pressure, and so again, there's a lot of talent on this team, and there's a lot of pressure on him, but I think that's a really good thing, though, for him, because he is the, uh, he's the type of player, he's the type of guy that, you watch him and uh, how he goes about business. He's very professional. I don't think he's going to leave anybody for a loop. Um, I think, like I said, there's a lot to like about Brent Brennan. I am. Uh, I don't know that what his upside is, but I think he's the right man for this job because I think he's going to be solid. Now, you look at the uh, the uh, coaches. I think the one that you got to be curious about is Dino Babers. Does Dino Babers still have his fastball? I think we're going to find that one out. I don't know. Um, but with Dino Babers and then Dwayne Aquina, who I know still has his fastball, I feel comfortable because, again, it's these are career coaches. It's not like you're bringing in Noel Mazzoni or somebody that you know just sucks. These are career coaches that have some really good, some really good backgrounds to them. But like I said, I'm going, I'm going with Arizona. Now, let's look at some of the other teams that obviously are getting a lot of hype. Colorado, Colorado. I um, listen. Colorado's pick to finish 11th in the Big 12. Um, I don't get it with Colorado. Uh, I I've, obviously I understand that Deion Sanders is there, but with Deion, they, Deion Sanders, um, that team finished last in the conference last year. So the uh, I think that's something that we need to uh, certainly keep in mind. Um, and with Deion, you know, obviously he's got his son, but you know, you got Travis Hunter. You got a great receiving core. I get it. Is your line going to be able to protect him? And what happens then when things go wrong? 
Are people just going to start blaming each other? Or, and because I think that that's something that could easily happen because it's all, it happened last year. When things went wrong, Dion blamed other coaches. Dion blamed players. This past offseason, uh, you know, Shadur, Travis Hunter were blaming the, uh, you know, heck, even the offensive line. So we'll see. I don't, I think it's difficult when you're in a spot where I don't know that there's a ton of accountability. And I think with Colorado, I don't think that there's a ton of accountability there. And when things hit the fan, then I think you start wondering, um, okay, what is that next step then? I would worry about that, honestly, if I was a Colorado Buffalo fan, what exactly is that next step then? Um, but we'll find out, obviously, uh, Dion likes some Dion, so we'll, there's a lot more talent this year. But Vegas and the media is not buying Colorado. I do wonder though, do Colorado people go away after this season? How many of these people are actually Colorado fans? How many of these people are just Dion people? That is going to be very, very fascinating to find out. Now, some other teams that I think are very interesting in this. Uh, you've obviously got at uh, at uh, Iowa State. You got Rocco Beck. I mean, probably the most underrated freshman in the country last year. Looking at uh, looking at Iowa State and looking at Rocco Beck, you know that he put up big numbers, and you know I think he's somebody that you can project winning a lot of games with. Can he take that next step? Can he go from being really good to great? I don't know that, but I do think that uh, there's certainly that possibility there. And he's got, like I said, he's got a pretty, he's got a good arm. He's got a, uh, you know, he can make the throws that he needs, and he's very smart as well. So there's that. Now, I don't put Iowa, I don't put Iowa State or West Virginia in that group of five, even though I know that both are going to get some top 25 uh, level uh, love and consideration. I don't see that with them. I think that they are kind of in that second tier. I just don't know that the overall upside is there because, listen, I mean, if Arizona hits, they're going to be really, really good. If uh, Oklahoma State uh, hits with Alan Bowman and he's uh, good, they're going to be really, really good as well. I mean, you could say the same thing for Kansas State and Avery Johnson. If Jalen Daniels can stay healthy, Cam Rising stays healthy, et cetera. Um, you know, I just uh, – that to me that to me is going to be um, – uh, um, that to me is that to me is just where it's going to be. Uh, that to me is just where it's going to be interesting. Um, and so we will uh, we will find that uh, we will find that one out. It's going to uh, there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to be intrigued by. Now, national title contenders. Are there any national title contenders in this conference? Because I think that's another one that is uh, fascinating for me. But first ebay motors my friends ebay motors check it out all kinds of good stuff at ebay motors now millions of parts for your mvp win every time with parts that fit your ride here's the great deal with ebay motors is that again a lot of people are used to being screwed over by somebody that they take their car parts in and they're like hey wait a second here this shouldn't be this much should it and they're like oh yes it should don't worry just sign on the dotted line you sign on the dotted line and then you end up being disappointed all right now with ebay motors they say don't worry about any of that we have millions of parts for your mvp with uh, part every part that fits your ride check out ebay motors again Get the part you need, then take it to somebody that you trust. Save yourself some money in the process. eBay Motors. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, national title contenders in this conference. Are there any? Um, listen, I think that there are some borderline ones. I'm not going to sit here and say that this is something like, you know, a Georgia or an Alabama you know, where you're like, all right, well, duh. But there are certainly teams that I think if things go right, they have that. I mean, look at it. Let's just talk Arizona for a second. Arizona's got, what, eight, nine guys that would start for about any team in the country. And, you know, when I say eight to nine guys that would start for any team in the country, uh, I mean it. You know, Noah Fafita, obviously. Then you got T-Mac, obviously. Then you've got Jonas Savanea, obviously. Then you've got Takario Davis, obviously. So Jacob Manu, obviously. Then there's some other ones that are kind of on that fringe, but you could easily make that case. A Wendell Moy, a uh, Dalton Johnson, 
trading Stukes in the nickel. There's a lot of different dudes in there that you could easily make that case. And there's not a lot of teams that can say that. How many teams have uh, uh, are loaded with players that would start for about any team in the country? Arizona is one of those teams. Then, obviously, Utah. I think the thing with Utah you always just kind of worry about is the explosiveness. But maybe bringing in Dorian Singer, you know, for some of the over-the-top uh, uh, jump ball passes is going to be able to help getting rising back because they're going to be solid as well. Then, you know, obviously, I think Kansas State has a world of upside with Avery Johnson. It's just going to be able. It's going to be interesting to see if he can connect on that one or not. If he can connect, then he uh, then uh, Kansas State is going to be very good. So I don't know if there's any national title contenders, but I also don't know that there aren't. And I just kind of laid out the case for. I think it's it's difficult for me to see Oklahoma uh, Oklahoma City Oklahoma State being a national title contender with Bowman. I just don't think that he has that kind of uh, upside. I could be wrong though. I don't necessarily see that one. But overall, though, a lot of talent in the Big 12. A lot of talent. And again, don't let anybody tell you that there's not, because again, there're going to be five preseason top 25 teams, and there's not a lot. You know. Um, that's really, really good. So it's definitely one. It's definitely a conference that matters, and we'll certainly keep you in the loop on that. Now, coming up tomorrow, we got. We're going to have our first. Uh, we're going to have our first reaction from fall camp. What exactly is going on with uh, the University of Arizona? How does everybody look? Keep in mind, this is a brand new coaching staff. This is a coaching staff that is, uh, you know, just kind of. You know they went through uh, they went through uh, spring, but now you're in fall camp. The games are less than a month away, or about a month away. What is this coaching staff looking for? And I think we're going to be able to see, you know, from a player perspective, what is everybody looking for? It's just going to be a lot of fun. Like I said, I watch this. Uh, you know, I watch this program, and like I said, I've got a lot of expectations for this team. I believe that this team should be able to be very, very good, and. I have a lot of faith in this coaching staff to be able to make that one happen. So we're going to obviously talk about that. We're obviously, we were remiss today, but we need to talk about TJ Benson as well. TJ Benson uh, getting that or getting that assistant coaching job for the U of A. Very, very cool. TJ is a dude that deserves it. Not only does he deserve it, he is, um, he is a real asset to Arizona. And when I say he's a real asset to Arizona, I mean that he's a, he's a dude who you watch him and you're like, he's grinding behind the scenes with really nobody, you know, a lot of times when people aren't watching and he was rewarded for his hard work. And so again, we're definitely going to talk about him. Good, good, good dude as well. He, I think he pairs perfectly with Jack Murphy. And I think that Arizona is uh, Arizona is very very lucky to have him. I'm glad that Tommy Lloyd rewarded him in such a manner because it seemed to me that he certainly you know when he uh, with his hard work he definitely deserved uh, deserved that. And you know again we'll talk about the rest of the coaching staff how exactly this all play, uh, plays out as well because you know you got two uh, coaches what's the future for Steve Robinson and what is it, you know what's Tommy Lloyd looking for in an assistant um, I think that's you know those are all fair questions especially with Ricky Floyd moving on so we'll find that we'll find that one out but again football is obviously going to be the priority uh, really excited to be able to break down that first practice just what's going on <clears throat> excuse me player availability and you know who has expectations for what so we will definitely uh, we'll definitely find all of that out so again but as very as always very very much appreciate you all making locked on wildcats your first listen of the day i'm your host mike luke bear down back the a and like i said we are in the we're in football we are in basketball we are in everyday mode around here there's no better time to be an arizona wildcat and this certainly shows that so again have a great rest of your day come back with us tomorrow oh oh one other thing too one other thing we're gonna have a little bit of recruiting news as well as well all right now enough uh, enough fool's gold on this uh, on that note have a great rest of your day